All right, let's get started. Again, thanks thanks again for everyone for joining us. Uh, it's Chuck Roscoe, I'm here with Ken Hunter. We're gonna quickly go through a couple slides here. Ken's gonna get into J Magic, and I'm gonna show a couple actual live um, Edge Magic, some reading of RFID um, uh, throughout the webinar. Again, it's gonna be short. Uh, so please feel free to reach out to us either via sales at cyber.com or help at cyber.com afterwards. We'd be more than happy to work with you one-on-one. -on -one. We can do a, like a, a real demo uh, with you. We use GoToMeeting a lot with webcams and all that good stuff. Um, so feel free to, to reach out to us. And if you have any questions, you can use the question uh, menu and the, in the GoToWebinar toolbar and uh, and send those out to us. If we have time at the end, we'll answer them, but we'll certainly get back to you even afterwards if we don't have a chance to answer your questions today one-on-one. Uh, uh, -on -one. So let's get started. What is RFID? Radio frequency identification, but what is it really? So if you're not aware, if you haven't looked into this stuff, it's just this tiny little chip. It's like a grain of sand, this little thing right here um, that, can, has different memory banks in it. There's EPC memory, there's user memory, there's a tag ID memory. Uh, you can put all this information in there and it really acts as a license plate or as what I like to say a barcode on steroids. So this little chip can get encoded and the little chip, you can see it's soldered to an antenna, this bigger piece here, if you look to the one to the right, that's all it is, that little chip's in the middle and it's that antenna that, that gives it the ability to be read from anywhere from 15, 20, I mean, even 30 feet away and inside of cartons. So that's one of the big deals with RFID is that you don't, there's no line of sight needed or any of that stuff. And there's all these different handheld and, and fixed readers that can read this information. So you don't have to go up like with a barcode reader and read the barcode one at a time. So let's just move out to the next one here. So how, how does it incorporate it into a label? This is the most common way uh, we'll see RFID. Uh, it's actually part of a label itself. So you may just have your regular, here's like a carton label here. And if you wanna, you can purchase four by six inch label stock that actually has the RFID inlay as part of it. And the price of these have come down a lot over the years where, heck, I remember like 15 years ago when we were first starting with this, it was like 50 to 75 cents for these. I mean, they're down to 10 cents and below for, for a label with an RFID tag, um, which is great. So. And Ken's going to show you in just a second how to how to activate those. But what are the benefits of RFID? So, like I was saying, it's like this this barcode on steroids. So, so you, your your inventory, if you if you know, instead of going through and doing cycle counts and reading individual barcodes, you can read a whole aisle uh, very quickly and very accurately accurately uh, because not only can you read them from far away, but each RFID tag when it's encoded is 100% unique. So they have these serial numbers on, on the end of them. So you may have like a shirt, like 20 red shirts, you know, size small, they have the same UPC number, but all 20 will have a different serial number on them. So if you wanna read all the, you just hold down the reader, read all 20 and, and it'll show that. It's not like you're gonna miss a barcode read or read extra barcodes. So it, the accuracy is really up there. And of course, and all that lends to your out of stocks being, you know, much, you know, much more, you know, infrequent uh, and the cycle counts, it's incredible. The, the, the speed to do your inventory of the cycle counts really is com comes down dramatically. And this information, if you do any research on RFID, you'll see Auburn University a lot. They've done a lot of research on this and different tests um, and worked with different companies. And here's one here where they spoke with just eight different brand owners looked at a million different orders and they were looking for these types of issues. Uh, so if an item wasn't picked, if it was overpicked or mispicked, and they did that for a, a whole year. And what they found was, and this is pretty amazing, using just a barcode reader, so like a UPC, uh, you know, regular barcode scanner, uh, the accuracy was 31%. When we went up to RFID, 99.9%, .9%, which, Again, amazing. So that's something to think about in the back of your head. You know, if accuracy is a big deal for you, maybe RFID, even though it's a small extra expense, maybe it makes sense to to, to start looking at it. Um, and in fact, they looked at a million different orders, and only one of them was was a problem once they they shipped using to the RFID technology. So obviously a huge benefit. 
I don't, I've only said this twice, I guess I'll say it again. <laughs> so when it comes to barcode reading, it's kind of like teaching somebody to fish and they can get a fish one at a time, right? This guy on the left, or you know, scan a barcode one at a time, but shift over to RFID, it's like having a net and grabbing tons of fish or reading tons of inventory all at once, super fast and super accurate. So I think I've made my point, let's move on. And this part is where, on the left here is the JMagic interface, which you're probably pretty uh, familiar with. I'm going to shift over to Mr. Hunter for just a moment. He's going to show you how you can take a, uh, uh, let me see, make presenter. How you can take a basic format in Mark Magic that you may have had for a while and add an RFID field to it and start using it. Yeah, excellent. So I've got my JMagic open here and um, I've got a price tag that uh, it's probably just the price tag that maybe you've been using for a while now. And you can actually just convert that existing Mark Magic format into an RFID enabled format. Uh, a couple simple things. First, you probably have to put the uh, required logo on it from GS1. So that's very simple, just adding a graphic, uh, nothing crazy there. So it's just a new logo that you have to put on there uh, that's required. But um, the way everything works in Mark Magic is through the same UPC data field that you've been encoding or printing for the longest time. So this UPC barcode that's 12 digits long that you've been printing, uh, we can take that same information and what we do is this, this data field that's been, you've been using forever. Um, now in Mark Magic, there is a field called usage and you simply tag the data the UPC data that, you, that you're passing already to Mark Magic. You don't even have to pass new data and reprogram anything. You just we're using existing data, so we're tagging it as build GTIN. Couldn't be any simpler than that. And that basically just triggers this whole uh, RFID brain in the Mark Magic side to um, serialize everything, organize everything, arrange the data properly so that it conforms to the standards uh, needed to create an RFID chip. Uh, so uh, you just tag your data, build GTIN. And there's other um, usages here for uh, more unique use cases for RFID, but for your industry standard uh, SGTIN labels, uh, which you're probably all um, eager to do, uh, you set your data field to build GTIN. So when you do that now, uh, and when you create an RFID field, I've already got one created on here, but there would be a, a option to create RFID field up here. Um, I've created it ahead of time for you. Uh, and it's, it's very, very similar to uh, creating a link field. So if you're familiar with adding a barcode and just linking it to some data and then printing a barcode, printing your UPC, it's the, kind of the same thing. You're adding an RFID barcode in, <laughs> in a sense. Uh, so we're doing star link field. Uh, there's just a couple other extra options though, very unique to RFID. Uh, all, all RFID chips need to be encoded in hex. Um, you don't even need to worry about converting all that stuff to hex. That's some crazy stuff that even I don't get. So <laughs> let, let Mark Magic do it for you. So convert the data to hex, 96 bits worth, um, and then all the special formatting too, all the different industry standards. So uh, we've got SG10, there's others here, um, some other government required and, and, ones and, too. Yeah, and that's a good point, Ken, and, and that's a, kind of a big deal when it comes to RFID or EPC encoding. So GS1 kind of has created all these different standards, which are mind boggling, uh, which you don't have to worry about if you're using software such as Mark Magic and our Edge Magic software, we take care of the different encoding schemes. Um, yeah. Good. Yeah, it's all special arrangement of the data, and oh, it's it's, but it, yeah, it, it all works when you set that data field to build GTIN and then convert to hex. Uh, and there's other options here for locking, uh, some some requirements that uh, that the data be very secure, that no one can uh, erase data on the tag as it's sitting out there. So you can do locks and unlocks. So that's all an option in Mark Magic as well. And then after you've set these fields up, there's a, a little uh, wizard. Uh, so very similar to the link panel, when you create a link field and for printing or barcoding, 
Uh, we've got a little wizard here that takes you step by step uh, creating these um, uh, these RFID fields in, in, in the correct order. So, and if you looked at the, the GTIN requirements, there's there's special segments that need to be added, but um, if we can get into those, you know, when you get the the GTIN manual and uh, go in order here. But this, we follow the order, um, and we just pick the data field, the UPC data field, um, and fill in the company prefix. Um, depending on your company, it's six in length, seven in length, or eight in length. Um, when you do that, then your item reference is a certain length, and we know that there's a whole table here, and we you can't mess up adding these fields in. Uh, and then the last one is you, you add your 12-digit serial number, basically just referencing the same UPC number over over and over again in this wizard, and I'm telling you it just it just works. It's pretty simple. So uh, after we've added them in, and you hit OK, you've added an RFID field to your label. So, so what just happened was that label, I mean, it became RFID enabled, but the only change you would have to make on a, as a customer is to have an RFID enabled printer. And all these printers, all these companies, so like Zebra, Avery Dennison, Datamax, and so on, Toshiba, Sato, they all have RFID enabled printers. Um, it looks just like a regular thermal printer. Um, it's just like like an extra couple hundred bucks and it has an RFID antenna actually inside of it. You wouldn't know the difference of it. And then at print time, when Mark Magic is told to print, it'll actually encode and you actually gotta load your RFID stock in there instead of just your regular labels. And that print time, we'll go ahead and encode that data uh, into the chip, as well as print all the other stuff that you're used to printing over the last number of years. So it is very quick. So, and that's kind of a big deal with, when it comes to RFID, it's all about getting the label with the data uh, on your product. And after that, you can really take advantage of things. Anything else here, Ken? Should I grab it from you? No, I think that's it. We've okay. added an RFID field, pretty simple. Okay, great. Thank you. So things to, to think about when, with RFID is is the different areas that it, that it presents value. So, and we're not probably all used to, to, to looking at different areas of our business and our process and say like, all right, well, this could be faster, this could be cleaner, this, this could be more accurate. Um, so obviously, you know, packing, the shipping, receiving, um, can all get cleaned up and, 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 and more valid as far as the data coming in using this technology. Okay. Uh, the, the same is true in, in the warehouse, even tracking of assets, the different information, it, it provides the history of where things have been read because you're reading them more often is important. So what cyber brings to the table uh, in these areas is not only this mark magic piece, which I think you're all familiar with everyone on this webinar. Uh, we also bring three different edge products uh, uh, to the market as well. The, these have been around for quite a while. There's edge micro, there's edge magic, and there's edge IT, edge finity IOT. Um, I'm gonna show a little bit of some like real world use cases uh, that are using these different technologies and all the edge uh, software really comes down to being able to read these tags, right? So we've already gone through the effort of getting an RFID tag on our product, right? So that's that's part of it. So here, and these are like real world pictures, if you haven't noticed of different implementations we've done over the 15 years. I mean, that cardboard was pretty expensive here on the winder. But here's a zebra printer, right? Using Mark Magic to encode these labels. So that's one way to get the data inside uh, uh, in the label and a tag. There's print and apply machines that handle all this stuff. Uh, there's over here on the left is a, what we call scan and encode. This, this where it says alien is actually an RFID fixed reader. And this and this is a barcode scanner here. So this is kind of like a more of a manual process where the barcode scanner reads a barcode like that UPC label, or it could be a SKU number, it could be anything. It reads it or, and Edge Magic is connected to that barcode reader. And and we turn around and use the 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 reader here to encode the tag that's sitting on it. So it's, you can go one at a time. Like we have some, uh, we have a library that uses that for books. So as, as books are checked out, they put an RFID label on there and then they have the barcode scanner read the, um, was it the Dewey Decimal System or whatever the, the barcode is on the back of the book and then it encodes it in the chip. And then when they walk out of the library, 
uh, they actually have an RFID reader there that validates that it's that that book was checked out and, and everything's fine. Otherwise, like a little alert will go off. So what's nice about that is you're not changing anyone's patterns. Like so you got your person with the book and they're just going to walk out with it. It's just like they normally would. So that's getting the tag information uh, in the label. The next step or next that, that or evolution in RFID that we see for customers like, all right, great. We've got these tags. We put them on our products, on our assets or whatever stuff you want to, that's important to you that you want to track. Oh, uh, okay. Or you can buy tags that are pre-encoded and stick them on things. You can get these tags in all kinds of different form factors, but okay. I actually want to get some use out of this now. It's nice that all my products have tags on, but how do I use it? So, an inexpensive way is there's all various types of mobile RFID readers. Um, they could be iOS based or Android based. Uh, you know, back in the day, there was a lot of them had Windows Mobile and all that stuff. But a lot of them look just, they're just like the barcode handheld scanners you've been using in the warehouse or for checkout for all these years. They just have a little antenna attached to the front of them. Um, and we have built apps for all these different types of devices. This is just showing some of that one. Here's the Edge Micro piece and all the different uh, functions within uh, Edge Micro and Edge Magic that are available. So you can you can even use these to encode a tag. Hey, maybe I'm walking around in my in my warehouse and I, I oh, there's some some new product came in. I could just manually actually use this bar, this handheld scanner. It'll read the barcode and turn around and encode a tag that I just stuck on there. So now, all right, great. Now these products are RFID enabled. Um, the other real big thing is cycle count, which is basically you know inventory control. Um, that's obviously part of the app. And this other slide here on the this picture on the right, I wanted to mention, only because a lot of folks don't think about it. Since you're walking around with these handheld devices, they all have GPS. So our app actually activates that. Where if you put in this Latin long, I think it would show you where we are in right near Buffalo, New York. Um, as you read the items you can actually get their locations uh, just via GPS. So we include all that data with it as, as you're reading inventory. So um, another part of the handheld feature is uh, seek and find. Some folks call it Geiger counter. Uh, here's actually our VP of sales there. There's Mike Shabet, if you know Mike, that's what he looks like using the Geiger counter function to find this jacket at one of our customers. And, and what that is really is you just you put in what you want to find, you hold the trigger down, and you can be 30 feet away from the actual, maybe you can't find it, it'll start beeping, and as you get closer, it'll beep louder and louder and louder, and this bar will go more to the right and all that good stuff, so you can find products, or products that are maybe piled up on top of other things that you can't find. This is a great way to use RFID, because again, there's no line of sight uh, involved. Uh, and here's another one. This is actually a uh, auction house uh, that uses RFID on a handheld uh, that does uh, basically picking for a consignment where it's going back to an EdgeMagic server and, and grabbing what needs to be in the boxes. And it gives and it validates and tells you when you're low on items or extra items. So again, that's just another RFID uh, uh, handheld unit. Getting into fixed readers and like uh, like really automatic type reading, right? Because even with a handheld, I mean, it's a heck of a lot better than a barcode really. So I don't have to like point and shoot every single barcode, but I still got to kind of walk around with this handheld, even though I can do it really fast. Um, there are uh, fixed RFID readers. So this picture down here on the lower right is actually our R&D center here in, the, in West Seneca, New York. There's Mike again. He's in all the pictures. I don't know how we manage that. Um, this square here is actually an RFID antenna. There's another antenna there, another antenna here, and this is what we call a cage. And this is a this is a conveyor that we have. It's like a, just it's just a big circle, and we just whip these cartons around. And what Edge uh, Magic does is actually reads the barcode on the other side of the box, validates, looks up what's supposed to be in there, and then in about 300, yes, yeah, 300 milliseconds. That's how that's how long that carton is inside there as it's going through. It reads these antennas turn on. There's a photo eye in there. It turns on automatically. Re, you know, reads everything that's in there, validates based off the carton number the barcode scanner got, and you know we get a red light or green light. And if we had a diverter, you can divert things. It's like oh, you know, what? you're missing a product. There's an extra product. Um, so that's like think about that. How fast that is. And this conveyor, we can get up to like 400 feet per minute. 
And these cartons can be a lot closer to each other too. We've had them about uh, two feet apart, just whipping through there and it's just validating that fast. So again, you're not slowing down your process at all. You don't have to take a box off the conveyor, open it up and, and check you know, what the products are inside you know, every now and then at a vast station or any of that. Instead, you could just validate everything that's coming through and of course shipping or, or anything that has a conveyor. Uh, the picture on the left is actually, this is a really old installation at one of our customers, but same type of thing. There's the cage. If you look real close, you can see the barcode scanner. You see that little diagonal red line. It's reading that barcode there and it's validating everything that's in there. And you can see how fast it's going because that's just a blur. So it must be going really fast, that, that, uh, that conveyor. Um, oh, so the other part of this is like, what does the data look like? Not that you would ever look for this stuff but so when that carton when a carton is red this is just kind of giving you a little, a little bit in the weeds what what's happening here so it, you know it gets the carton number we look up in the database what's supposed to be in there this data here as ken was saying earlier the hex information so what's typically encoded in these rfid tags ends up getting converted to 24 characters or or, or 12 hex pairs that's what this data is again you don't need to know any of this stuff the software takes care of it but actually, in 300 milliseconds, it read that barcode, read these 24 different RFID tags in the box, decoded them into their G10, which is basically the UPC, and validated them in 300 milliseconds. Um, and along with that, we even have other data in here, which antenna in the cage read it and all that good stuff. And there's different, I won't get into RSSI, but this is the, basically the strength of the read itself, so it's good information to have. Another real world use case, um, a, a, a bus company, not Acme with the Roadrunner, we had to put something else up there, but uh, this, is, this, uh, this has been implemented for about two and a half years now. Uh, the picture here on the right is our two antennas. And then up here, I don't know if you can follow my cursor, is actually the fixed reader. So those antennas are attached to that reader. So what this bus company is doing is actually tracking their buses as they're coming in and out of different uh, depots to see how long they've been there and if they're on time and all that stuff. So this, the, the two antennas, one is pointing in, the other one's pointing out. On the bus, like right about here, they have an RFID tag just sitting there on the dashboard. Again, for two and a half years, they've been doing this. And it just reads, from, and this is about 20 feet up in the air. It just reads down and reads that individual tag ID and then updates the, the, the database. So if you look at the what are called product IDs here on the left, these numbers, these are actually bus numbers right here. And you can see the data, that's oh, about almost a year old or so that we got. And they're actually using Edge Magic up in the cloud on a Amazon AWS instance. So all this is connected up there in the cloud and, and easily accessible. So it's great to have all this data. They, they check to see you know, where things are and they have different rules set up. But if you drill down on some of the data, like we'll just pick on this one bus number 83816, uh, you can click on that link and it'll just show you, this is all for this one bus. I mean, it's like amazing the amount of data you can, you can get. You can see when it was checked in, when it pulled in, when it pulled out, how long it's been in these different areas and so on. So this is a complete like history of this bus. So again, you're reading that barcode on steroids from about, in this case, they're probably about 15 feet away when it, when it reads it. And the bus is just driving in and out. They don't know any different. You're not slowing anybody down. You know, I have this other piece I wanted to show you, you know, because I was thinking about this webinar. Um, we actually have, we're working on a, with a, with a customer now. They've been, they've been live for, I don't know, six or eight months. They're actually a, a, a how do I say, it? a cannabis grower? Is that what I say, Ken? Sounds about right. Yeah. Sounds about right. Okay. So, and they use Edge Magic to track um, from the from the mother plant to, to clones to trays all the way to when they 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 actually create product and the different oils and all that stuff. But in our office right now, we have Edge Magic running on one of the servers, and uh, and I have a, an RFID reader and antenna set up in the conference room, and I have some tags in there. If I just click Start here, just to give you an idea. See how fast that was? I mean, I'll, I'll do it again in a second, but in about two seconds, there's 254 tags in that room and it just read all of them. So here, I'll click clear and then watch how fast it reads them again. 
It's that fast. So think about how long it would take you to do it with a barcode scanner. I mean, you'd still be in there, right? You maybe you're up to like 50 by now. So that's how fast RFID can read. Make it read even faster than this, actually. Okay. So that's a real, real world example. Next. Different metrics is that, that it's another thing just to kind of get you to think about it because because we're not used to doing this. Um, you know, if if you're in warehouse or manufacturing, you're dealing with that when you're doing inbound receiving of, of items, kind of like with the conveyor system, and you can use fixed infrastructure along with handheld readers. There's all you can mix and match all this stuff. Um, the cycle counts are just unbelievable. How how more quickly uh, you can do it with RFID and how much more accurate it is instead of someone sitting there scanning the same barcode, right? Like five times saying, oh, I got five of these. It's impossible to do with RFID because every tag is unique uh, and it's gonna have, you're gonna have to read all five individual things and, and how much more quickly it could be done. So you may do cycle counts instead of once a year, you'll do them once a week or you can do them every day if you want and have that inventory really up to date. Other things uh, when it comes to actually putting the, the cartons away after receiving and then picking and so on, I'm not gonna read these off to you, but these are all different areas that can be optimized with RFID. And of course, outbound, same thing. So you print it and pack and you can look where trucks are. I mean, it's more than just products, it's assets as well uh, that were, were, where it can be utilized. So the power of the platform. So we, we kind of went real quick and that was part of the deal. Uh, we have the Mark Magic piece, which we've already talked about. We have all these different printers and the RFID encoding. We have Edge Magic, which Edge Magic we, really relates mostly to the passive side of, of these of these tags where it energizes the antenna and it gets the data back. That's what we were showing earlier. And it runs up there, it's all web-based and it has the apps and, and, and whatnot. Uh, we also have another, the other one's called Edgefinity, which actually I'll show you a live thing of that in just a second. Hey, Greg, where are you? You can come into my office if you're listening. Okay, here he comes. Uh, I'll show you like a live thing with Edgefinity. So Edgefinity, it has these, uh, you can actually have a, a map, uh, floor plan, and watch things move around uh, within an office or in a warehouse and find products. So this here is just a quick video that we put together of where you can click on different assets in this case and see where they are, right? And I'll just run that one more time. All right, but here I'll do a live one. Okay, so here's, this is Edgefinity, very graphical, you know, the way it looks. So if I go into locate, and I want to look at our West Seneca office. You can see this is actually our office. This is where I am over here. And you can see these different colors and different things or different products that, that we have that we track throughout. But let me just, I'll get rid of the people here and even the assets. And I just want to track one thing at a time just so you can have an, an idea. Uh, I have this Raymond's laptop. It's here in my office. If you look in the bottom left-hand corner, this is using active RFID or RTLS, uh, where it can really narrow down within a few feet of where something is located. So Greg's gonna go ahead, actually go ahead and steal that Greg, and you can go ahead and walk over here to the exit door on the on the left of the screen. Okay, Greg's leaving with the laptop. Let's see what he does. So this is all part of the Edgefinity system. You can have passive RFID as part of this as well as he goes through. And you can even have alerts such as this. So this alert came up because someone was trying to steal the laptop and just show that it's you know the real time. And that's that's the time, which we're a minute over already. I see that. Um, but that's that's one of the things that 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 Edgefinity can do with the rules base, but you can incorporate passive RFID, those 10 cents or cheaper tags, you know, on your products along with RFID technology, or uh, excuse me, active RFID technology. Um, just wanted to give a, a quick, uh, show that quickly. Um, and I think that was our last slide. I think it was, I appreciate it. We have one quick question. Let's, Ken, do you have anything you wanna add? 
No, that was great. Thanks. Okay. Yeah, one question is just, uh, oh, there's a question on the RFID tags themselves that have to be on a four by six inch label. And the answer is absolutely not. I mean, th these we have RFID tags uh, super small uh, that will actually be applied to uh, like jewelry tags. So, you know, like a half inch by half inch or even smaller. So you can buy these in all different form factors and different sizes or uh, not only labels, but the tags, you can put them on metal. There's, there's really big ones. And the bigger they are, the larger the antenna is, uh, typically the further away you can be to read them. So that's one of the things to keep in mind. So, uh, and there's like a few other questions, but I'll get back to you folks separately since we're already over. I appreciate everybody's time. And uh, please feel free to reach out to us with any questions uh, on RFID or Mark Magic or any of that as you get into different projects. Thanks a lot, everyone. Thank you, Ken. Thanks. You're welcome. So long.